والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه المعين وبعض Perhaps you can close that door and open the other one so we don't have this traffic jam over here and put the, put the, the, put the, seat, put the chairs in front of the door there and then open that door Thank you we begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers and in particular on the last of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad The pagan Arabs never had a prophet amongst them. And now a man from within their own midst, who they respected, they even honored him. He was so honest and so trustworthy and so truthful. They called him Al-Ameen. He was married to a wealthy woman and uh, he was held in esteem, he belonged to the Quraysh, he belonged to Banu Hashim, he held a very respectable position in society. And now he declares, I am a prophet, like there were prophets before. And they knew about Ibrahim alayhi salam. They knew about his Haq alayhi salam, they knew about his Ma'il alayhi salam. They had contact with the Jews who were just next door in Yathrib, Medina. How can we tell whether he is indeed a prophet? So they sent a delegation to the, to the rabbis in Medina. The rabbis responded, by saying, ask him these three questions which only a prophet can answer, which only a prophet can answer. In other words, knowledge externally acquired cannot deliver the answers. Only a prophet can answer. Ask him about the young man and the cave. Ask him about the great traveler who traveled to the two ends of the earth and ask him about the Ruh. When they came back, the Quraysh then came to Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam and said, if you are indeed a prophet, answer these three questions. And he says, I'll answer you tomorrow. We are told that he forgot to say, inshallah. There could be more to it than meets the eye. That inshallah has a pivotal role to play in the story which now unfolds, namely the signs of the last day. And insha'Allah is also to be found there in the digging of the wall. Hmm? We now recognize it, that an age is going to come when this sacred vocabulary will not just disappear from civilized discourse, civilized conversation. You can't be a diplomat and say, inshallah, you'll be fired. <laughs> you can't be a diplomat and speak about alhamdulillah and subhanallah 
and astaghfirullah, foreign office will call you back home. Hmm? You can't use this kind of vocabulary and survive in big business. No. An age is going to come when, when this vocabulary will disappear. These pious expressions will disappear. And this is the trademark. The word insha'Allah is used as a trademark by which you'll be able to recognize the subject which now unfolds. Are we in that age today? Most certainly we are. Jibra'il al Islam kept him waiting for two weeks before the answers were revealed. And there are some people who don't have patience. I better not mention any names, I could be in trouble. Hmm? <laughs> there are some people who have a shortage of patience. They can't wait. And so they come to conclusion right away and they rejected Islam. Yes, they did that in Medina. They rejected Islam because he could not give the answer and they couldn't wait. And there were others who were mocking. Look at him, he cannot answer. So we have secured a victory here. Hmm? But we know that Allah is with those who are patient. And if you wait long enough, the truth will come. And so the answers did come. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta sent down the answers, but significantly, two of the answers were placed in Surah al <coughs> But the third was put in Surah Bani Israel. And that could not be by accident. Mulana Abu Ala Mauduri is a very learned scholar of Islam and we have respect for him, for his scholarship as a servant, a sincere servant of Allah. He was persuaded, for reasons best known to him, that the third had to be in Surah al because the other two were there. So he decided that the third answer to the third question was to be found in the story of Musa alayhi salam and Qidr alayhi salam. Hmm? And he put that down in his tafsir, tafsir al Quran. We respect the Mawlana. We respect the ulama, the people of knowledge. And uh, <coughs> We mean no disrespect when we say, Maulana, you are wrong. Allah put the third answer in Surah to Bani Israel, and He did it for a reason. That there is a link between Surah to Kaf and Surah to Bani Israel. That the subject of Islamic eschatology is to be found primarily in Surah to Kaf and in Surah to Bani Israel. So these two surahs are linked with each other. To find some of the answers posed in Surah to Al-Kaf, you go to Surah to Bani Israel. <clears throat> the third question was asking about the Ruh. And the answer given to the question delivers a warning to us to be careful, to be careful. Allah says that after He created Adam alayhi salam, وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ And I, وَنَفَخْتُ is first person, وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ And I breathed into him of my ruh. My Ruh. So there is a divine Ruh. The Hindus call it Paramatma. So he also has Ruh. So 
today is the divine ruh. And this is breathed into the human being. So there's ruh in the human being. <coughs> but then he also has said, Tanazzalu al-malaikatu wal-ruh. That on that night, the angels and the ruh descend. وَأَيَّدْنَاهُ بِرُوحِ الْقُدُسِ And we strengthened him with the holy, or they call it the Holy Ghost. <laughs> the Holy Ruh. Hmm? And the Christians call it the Holy Ghost. So, which one? We have three here. We have Allah's Ruh. We have the human Ruh. We have Jibra'il alayhi salam who is Ruh. So it's a tricky question. Does he know about all of this? Will he be able to answer? How will he answer? Hmm? Ask him about the Ruh. And the answer comes down. And listen to how the answer comes down. Allah first repeats the question and then gives the answer. This must not escape your attention. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْرُوحِ And they question thee about the Ruh. And then he gives the answer. And then when Allah addressed the question about the great traveler to give the answer, he first repeats the question and then gives the answer. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنْ ذِي الْقَرْنَيْنِ And they question thee about so and so. And then proceeds to give the answer. I wonder why he didn't do that for question one. Huh? Is it my accident? It could not be by accident. Nothing <coughs> happens in this Quran by accident. Hmm? There must be a reason why. He does not repeat the question in giving the answer for question one about the young man and the king. When he answers the question concerning the Ruh, he delivers an answer which silences them. Kuli Ruhu min Amri Rabbi. Amr is command. Order. Say to them. Say this to them. Say only this to them. Say nothing more than this to them. That the Ruh is by Allah's command. And that silence them. There's nothing more. وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And insofar as this subject is concerned, you have only little knowledge. I have given you only little knowledge. This occurred a few years before. This, this occurred while we were still in Mecca, before the Hijra. We know that the answer reached them in Medina. We know that. Because when we arrived in Medina, they came to him and they asked, when your Lord said that you have only little knowledge of this subject, who was he referring to? Was he referring to us, the chosen people of Allah, for whom heaven is reserved, the elite of mankind, all the rest are cockroaches? Or was he referring to them, the cockroaches, the Ummiyun? And the answer stunned them. The Prophet said, he was, he was referring to both of you. 